axes were one of the main weapons of the Viking Age, being considered the common man's weapon, given their efficiency in combat and low cost production. The heads of the axes were made of iron and attached with wooden handles. Battle axes were distinguished by wide blades and downward projecting spurs, resembling the long beard worn by Viking warriors. For this reason, the weapon was also called a bearded axe. The axe's spur was used as a hook to pull the enemy's shield, leaving him vulnerable to attacks. Another terrifying axe used in battle was the Dane axe. The blade was light and very thin, with great cutting ability. The long handles could be up to one and a half meters long, providing a great reach during combat. The sea axe was a long knife used by Viking and Saxon warriors. With a single edge and heavy blade, this slightly crude weapon was relatively simple to use and produce compared to the valuable swords. A wealthier warrior might have a larger sea axe, some as large as swords. Sea axes were usually carried in a scabbard suspended horizontally from the belt. Some sea axes were adorned with precious metal ornaments and elaborate designs, and were worn as a symbol of high status by warriors. Some people preferred to use a sea axe instead of a sword in combat, since a shorter weapon could be more effective during close combat against a shielded wall. The short blade was also more easily concealed behind a shield, ready to deliver a quick and unexpected blow or cut against the enemy. The spear was the most used weapon during the Viking Age. Like other cultures, the Viking used spears as both attack and defense weapons. A well-placed wall of shields with spears pointing forward was a formidable obstacle in a battle. Spears could also be thrown at enemies, although models with shorter points and handles were used to accomplish this. The spear's points were made of iron. They were often decorated with precious metal inlays or geometric designs. The spearheads were attached to wooden shafts with a rivet, although these spears could measure 2 to 3 meters in length. Despite being a common weapon, the spear had great cultural significance for Viking warriors. It was the main weapon of Odin, king of the Norse gods and god of war. The sword was the most prestigious weapon in Norse society. Its production was intricate. For this reason, they were rare and overly expensive. Of the more than 100 weapons found in pagan burials from the Viking era in Iceland, only 16 were swords. This confirms that few warriors could have such a weapon. Members of the nobility or elite warriors usually own swords. For this reason, swords were commonly passed down as family heirlooms or buried next to the owner's body. Kings and tribal chiefs could buy swords with guards, pommels, and handles adorned with precious metals and jewelry. Viking-era swords usually had two sharp edges and were usually used with one hand. The other held the shield. Some of the best Viking swords were imported from the Rhine region and had the name Ulfberth written on the blade. Although little known, the Vikings also had a halberd called the Altgare. Many consider this halberd an ancestor of the medieval glaive. Others think the Altgair was a variation of the Dane Axe. Some halberds are described in the Norse sagas. However, no such weapons have been found in graves. They may have been rare or not part of the Viking funerary customs. The most famous user of the halberd in the Norse sagas was a warrior named Gunnar Hamadarsson, who was able to wield the Altgair with only one hand while holding his sword in the other. Gunnar was supposedly able to dismember and impale opponents with the halberd. In the Viking era, fighters used large round wooden shields. The Norse saga specifically mentioned the wood of the lime tree for building the shields. A shield needed to be large enough to provide the desired protection. When a warrior made a shield for himself, he adapted it to cover at least his torso. Therefore, shields came in many sizes. The Viking's shields were made of riveted wooden planks with a central hole for the hand. The shields were also highly decorated and some were painted with religious patterns or symbols. There was a domed iron protrusion in the center of the shield to protect the hand. Some Viking ships had side supports where the shields were mounted. They served as additional protection for the oarsmen and, through colors and symbols, also identify who was on board the ship. 
The helmets used in the Viking Age were generally quite simple. They were helmets with a prominent nose guard. The helmets were typically made with several pieces of iron riveted together. This made it easier to produce, but the strength was inferior compared to medieval elms. Other styles of helmets have been found in excavations. The best known is a helmet found in 10th century Norway. This helmet has a covering like spectacles, protecting much of the face, and allowing the eyes to have a good angle of vision. Wealthy warriors were able to have more decorated helmets, with bronze inlays and detailed carvings. Contrary to widespread belief, the Viking helmets used in battle did not have horns. However, it is possible that helmets adorned with horns and bird wings were used in some ceremonies. Chainmail was the main body protection during the Viking Age and was worn by warriors from many distinct cultures. Usually, the garment was produced with short sleeves, the length of which reached down to the thighs. The chainmail was probably worn over thick clothing and protected the wearer from cuts. However, it offered very little protection against blunt trauma and attacks from sharp spear-like points. The 12 kilograms of iron in a chainmail meant a treasure trove in the Viking Age. Few people could afford this level of protection. The price of chainmails must have been remarkably high. The iron loops were passed individually through neighboring loops to form the chainmail. Then, the loops were sealed closed and sealed with a rivet. This process was repeated numerous times to make the chainmail. Lamellar armor is a type of body armor composed of small rectangular plates of iron or steel. Lamellar armor was not as popular as chainmail during the Viking Age. However, archaeological finds show that this type of armor was used in Scandinavian regions. According to historical sources, the Byzantine Empire of the Rus of Kiev partially influenced Viking armor. Some Vikings were mercenaries for both peoples. Although it seems innovative, lamellar armor was quite old. Evidence indicates that the Assyrians in the early Iron Age were responsible for this armor's development. Lamellar armor became most popular among the Vikings who sailed and lived in the Baltic region. Some Vikings had a rather peculiar horn on their waist called the Galar horn, or War Horn. In Norse mythology, this horn was associated with the god Heimdallar and the sage Mimir. The war horn could be used as a trumpet to give orders to troops in battles, or to indicate the presence of enemies. Another purpose of the horn was to act as a drinking receptacle, often used at feasts to drink the much-loved Viking mead. Some of these war horns were richly adorned with carvings and precious metals. Archaeologists' findings indicate that there were sacred horns kept only for religious purposes, a custom of the ancient Germanic peoples. There were also horns made entirely of metal, usually bronze. They were a family heirloom and prestigious symbols. Much of the inscriptions on Viking horns tell about the history of the family to which they belong.